All right, so I'm pretty sure a lot of you are going to be wanting to know how can I have my Pro Tools set up for recording either clients um, or having a setup that is going to accommodate me, you know, instantly wanting to record. Okay, I believe that it's important to have uh, at least one or two templates that you like, whether it's a template for me or someone that you like um, that knows how to root, you know, that is going to save you time, right? Um, let's take it back. Uh, if I have a session with a client, um, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel every time, right? I think that's stupid. I need an input that's ready to go. All I need to do is just change the console input, right? If I'm running in console three, uh, input three, whatever, I need to have a channel for the beat or the instrumentals, et cetera, et cetera, right? I need to have a, a beat bus or something that I can import stems into. You get what I'm saying, right? You want to have essentially a, a template that's going to allow you to get stuff done quickly, right? Um, and so there are kind of certain characteristics that you're going to need. Um, you know when it comes to creating a viable template. Okay, the first thing is that it is low CPU. Okay, it's not complicated. Okay, those two things go hand in hand, right? You can either have something that is, um, you know, low CPU or high CPU and incredibly complicated. For example, you've got mastering plugins, you've got uh, 20 plugins on the vocal chain. You don't want that. Okay, you want something that's simple and sweet, um, and something that you can import stuff into. And immediately get going right so that's kind of what i can show you i'll just save a copy of this template then we can kind of um destroy this so let's just say this was my raw template this is a pretty good starting point but what i would have in this template right you can apply this towards my fl studio templates as well is you don't want too much going on off the bat right so for example um i wouldn't want this eq on the main vocal chain so i can actually just make that inactive maybe this compressor i could have active uh, maybe like a ds or something you know but i definitely do want a little bit of eq going you know just a little tad of eq maybe this is even too much something like that you know just to kind of add that sweetened sound onto our vocal but not manipulate it too much right we want the gain staging to kind of be default so we can kind of tone that back a little bit and then just adjust within a set range while we're setting up our artist right or once we're setting up our session mix session you know but we want to keep it simple okay nothing crazy on the vocal chain that would be unique to a different song okay um again these doubles will be cool and all um this is completely subjective obviously you could have these on if you want um you could do the doubles on the spot i think it's always quite fun to do doubles on the spot because you always end up with unique vocal chains like what you saw earlier in the course right i made this up from scratch and it was fun and we had fun right so you know that's subjective but definitely you need everything uh, rooted right because rooting you saw how long it actually takes it takes a couple minutes to set up our rooting if you have an artist who's ready to record don't want to waste time right so you know you get the idea um you know you want your vocal bar so you can turn down all the vocals at once you want to be able to turn down the beat at once um if you have a whole bunch of beat stems you want to be able to uh, root them all towards for example this um right here you know 21 20 uh, 2122 would be our beat sum or beat bus whatever you get the idea right we can do a whole bunch of cool stuff um and then you want a simple mix bus right so as you can see right here we have a whole lot of latency this is an easy way to see if you have huge latency going on a common problem a lot of people have is that they will um you know have an artist get set up they've got their uh, uh latency set to um, you know something low like uh, 64 samples and then they still hear this huge delay and it's usually because you've got a huge plugin on so as you can see our total latency is 3740 that's too much right so obviously we'd have to go ahead and just start deleting stuff we could then you know find stuff that you know um, is creating that latency what is it that would be doing that maybe is it this one 532 is it the h3000 huh interesting well, some things out here maybe it's this yeah this is actually quite yeah there we go so you can see we're kind of turning down a latency nothing over 100 you know there we go we've got a total um summed sample uh adding in of like 128 right so that's not bad we could record it that right so you want to be making sure you're doing things like that so you want to obviously pull up then a instead of using an l2 i mean instead of using a what is this called again yeah the, the l2 you can just use something like the waves you know what i mean it's it's pretty low latency it doesn't add much so let's look at our total now 192 that's usable right it's not too bad so you get the idea you want your template to be easy to use now let's kind of import some audio i'll try and just uh, find a different track for example and i'll get back to you all right so i found a quick session um just some random stuff um but we won't really listen to it but what we'll do is we'll just kind of set it up as if we were importing these files into our template okay and then we can kind of see how this session would uh, be able to accommodate it right or how we would be able to accommodate the session that this person has 
so we'll let that do its thing real quick all right so there you go i've just imported these tracks right now and it's a really simple session it has a beat and then it has two main vocals right obviously we could just now with the intense editing skills we have we can actually just chop this all together and not destroy it right this is all one main vocal i don't know why these tracks are summed together you know again these are all problems that need to be solved but um you know we could again just kind of chop this project up right so again i'm going to split this track into mono right because there's something strange going on here um these two tracks are different you know whatever okay let's just delete this main one okay and then now we have these two kind of interesting tracks i think this looks like a duplicate to that so we'll delete that uh this looks completely different i don't know what that is but for now we'll just uh, mute that out don't really need it right uh it sounds like a double or something actually you know we will need it just now but let's just listen to this real quick what is this um let's just fix these up so you was trying to be there for me you was there to care for right so we got this main vocal right here and then we've got another one right here by my side we was and awesome right so now what we can do is we can import these tracks or more so just drag them over to our main vocal chain right boom there we go it was like you was the chair for me now we've got all the reverbs and things set up, right? Pretty simple, right? Now let's pull over that beat um, towards our beat channel, right? So there we go, right? Holding me up when I was down, it was like you was the chair for me. Now, right? Now we can do our gain staging. I think these are some sort of doubles. Let's again just uh, what are these? See, this is why this uh, tool comes in handy, right? When we're able to kind of visually see, because sometimes you have really quiet audio on a track and you end up deleting it, and the artist is like, "Yo." Where's the double? You know what I mean? But we can delete this because it's a dud track, right? Um, I don't know what this is. Let's just solo this out. Yeah, I just want your ass here with me. It sounds like it could be this. Yeah, I just want your ass here with me. Yeah, it's just some duplicate track, whatever, right? But, um, you know, pretty simple. I think this is probably a doubler, so we'll shift this again over down to the doubler channel. Um, so let's put it down on this doubler right here. I don't know what it is, but let's listen to it. Yeah, it's a doubler. Again, you see how this is a unique vocal chain. You see what I said earlier about how it doesn't always work on every track, right? So we'll turn all of these off. Might as well make them inactive so we can save CPU. Okay, so there we go, right? Um, or we'll just leave the EQ on. Probably makes a lot more sense. Huh? So you was trying to be there for me. You was there to care for me. Holding me up when I was down. It was like you was the chair for me. Now I'm in these big leagues. It's like you don't even chair for me. Damn. Back in summer 16 when we used to dream big, we was talking about them rich ones. It said you know Right, obviously, you know, whatever. We'd have to make it unique to the track. Doesn't sound so good. But you get the idea, right? We can, you know, easily manipulate our track. Um, we can do our clip gain, right? Because again, we want a gain stage. So, you know, you need to find a reference level that works. I'm just gonna by default go between 10 and 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 holding me up when I was down. When it was like you was the chair for me. Now I'm in these big leagues, it's like you don't even chair for me. Damn, back in summer 16 when we used to dream big. We was talking about the rich ones. You said you never were mad. Reminiscing on the talks we had. Then my time was short lived. That's the same. Now you flew to my crib and your daddy's black Buick. It was summer madness. Right, there you go. Right now we can start mixing our track. Obviously, I'll probably crank this up a little bit. Get it sounding a bit better. But you get the idea, right? You can see how this template I whipped up can accommodate any track, right? And we can begin to manipulate. And as time goes on and, and you know, um, you build templates and whatnot, you're going to be able to. Holding me up when I was down, it was like you was the chair for me. Now I'm in these big leagues, it's like you don't even chair for me. Damn, back in summer 16 when we used to dream big. We was talking about the rich ones. You said you never were mad. Reminiscing on the talks we had. Then my time was short. Right, you get the idea. I would obviously have to mix this track, but there you go. That's pretty much how I would set up a client template. It's simple, right? When I'm at the end of the template and I'm ready, I can print the track, right? Maybe the, the client wants me to render out some of the beat, uh, the mixed beat, right? I can do that. I can have a, um, you know, I can create literally a um, aux for every subgroup. So, for example, I can have the mixed vocal. Um, let's do this. Um, create a new track stereo audio track right we'll, we'll we'll just use one as an example but let's say we have main vocal um effects right and basically this is just a print track right um for reference but again we could then um create that dual send so let's go to 22 and 24 whoops um what have i just done now um this needs to go to the mix bus as well right okay there you go right so now we have 23 and 24 
as our render bus, right? And then essentially we could render down this mixed vocal and we could do that with all the different stems, right? So we could have one of these files for the mixed beat, one of them for all of the background vocals. Again, you don't want to be too um, open to printing every little thing because it's going to make your life hell. So it's going to make your computer full of junk. Um, you know, you can do one for the effects bus. Essentially, do one for all of your buses and groups. That way, your client can walk away with a mixed file um, with all of the stems, right? Meaning they can actually go in and do a concert with just the beat. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe they can render down a version of a um, beat with ad libs or something. Obviously, they won't have the mastering, but those are things you'd have to negotiate, right? I'm just giving an example. So we can see right here, we could render down. So obviously now this vocal would have the SSL um, EQ on it, right? So, you know, you get the idea, man. Lots, lots we can do. But at the end of the day, you want a template that's going to be able to accommodate everyone. Because just say um, this girl right here, I think her name was Dana, um, you know, was here to record. I don't have to create a reverb send from scratch. She can say, hey, could I have a bit more reverb? I can say, cool. Let's say she was recording in real time, right? I was at war with myself. You was trying to be there for me. You was there to care for me. Yo, could you maybe make that reverb a bit darker, but also a bit less bassy? Sure, I can do that instantly, right? Um. When I was at war with myself, you was trying to be there for me. You was there to care for me, holding me up when I was down. It like that? Yeah, sure, maybe a little bit more. When I was at war with myself, you was trying to be there for me. You was there to care for me, holding me up when I was That took like two seconds, right? Do you see the point I'm trying to get at, right? We can really make things nice man um in pro tools again we can do that in any door but pro tools is a fun door to use so yeah man hopefully you enjoyed um th this course um i've pretty much given you everything you need and again hopefully you've watched this course over the span of three days uh watch what you 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 can take in take a bit of a break even if it's a week even if it's two weeks and just slowly but surely uh, figure out where everything is and i swear to you you can um, absolutely crush it i have forgotten about the automation let me do that real quick <laughs> let's just say i wanted to manually turn down certain parts of the beat right this is something that i find quite common i have not synchronized this this project up so it's a bit of a problem but let's just say i wanted this part of the track to be a bit louder right what i could actually do is i could go to volume okay and then i could go over to the beat and then instead of this auto read, I can actually go, um, I'm pretty sure it's touch. So now we can actually record the automation. So let's do this. Um. Hey, turn me up real quick. I need him to film me on this one. Yeah, right there. And again, I'm just doing something crazy so that we can see what's going on. But there you go. Can you see how I've literally just written the automation, right? It literally just recorded all the things that I did right there in real time. So that's really what that's for. You can just press the undo if you don't like something or you can um, hover over and then just press the delete button. But that's essentially how you write automation. It's as simple as that. It's really not much. Um, but yeah, man, hopefully you learned something and um, stay mixing every day. Hopefully this helps you enough to gain confidence to start that, uh, you know, studio in your neighborhood or whatever it is. And I swear to you, man, if you do this every day, uh, you realize you can come across a lot of cake. I mean, I remember making my first 100K of Pro Tools. It's crazy, you know what I mean? Haven't looked back since. So yeah, man, enjoy life, keep mixing, and I'll check you out. Uh, we will probably do, I do have a cool internet bundle. I don't have much, I get like 20 gigs a month of like boosted internet. So I'm probably thinking of doing some sort of either private Discord or a Zoom call where a lot of you can just ask questions one by one and hopefully answer. Um, hopefully everyone walks away knowing a bit more. I will do that in future, um, but uh, yeah, man, until then, I'll check you out.